Hey, it's Literary Concepts number eight. We're talking about some analogies. As far as what they are and what they do, analogies, simply stated, uh, are kind of more complex and more extended forms of simile and metaphor. Um, so we use a lot of the same language as simile and metaphor, but, uh, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to show some sort of complexity in that comparison. So if I say her hair was like a golden waterfall, again, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But if I use an example like the one below here where I say the U.S. government is like a birthday cake, that one might have you scratching your head. So an analogy is intended to kind of give us a greater explanation and connect like the parts of a birthday cake up to the parts of our U.S. government. Um, and again, the reason we do that is because we're trying to kind of connect a really complicated idea, in this case the U.S. government, with something that maybe is a little bit easier for us to understand, like a birthday cake. So one of the things that makes analogies so difficult is that we have different types of relationships that are used. And again, this, these relationships are something that we see a lot more when we talk about word analogies. Uh, but when we make these comparisons, we can look at like parts of a whole. So I can say that you know, in the cake, we have the frosting and the cake itself, the candles, um, all of that good stuff. And I can compare those to elements of the US government. So like the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch. Uh, but I can also talk about cause and effect. So if I was talking about making a birthday cake versus a cake that's already been made, my analogy is maybe going to change a little bit. So these are all the different ways that you can kind of make those comparisons and all the different things that you can use. So you can look at things that are alike. You can look at what's opposite. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to go with these things. So like I said, when we talk about word analogies, these are probably the ones that you've seen on tests. Um, so those little colons, they kind of mean uh, is to and as. So for example, the first one would be a tree is to a leaf as a flower is to a petal. So um, if the leaf is kind of at the top of the tree, when we compare the flower or when we have the analogy of the flower, we want to choose something that's also at the top. So we wouldn't say tree is to leaf like flower is to stem because we've got two different parts there. So we want to make sure that our analogies kind of match up pretty close. So when we look at literature uh, and we talk about analogies, we can have things that are a little bit more complex. So life being like a race. Well, we got to account for the runners. We have to account for the one who stops to catch their breath. Um, and again, we can have those things in life too. Uh, an example from Romeo and Juliet is comparing Romeo to a rose. So you can change the name of a rose, but it's still a rose. And you can do the same thing with Romeo. He can change his name, but he's still Romeo at his heart and core. Um, so those are some more complex examples. And again, these are even short for being complex. You can go a lot longer. And the last slide, you'll see one that's a little bit longer that compares a snowball to evolution. One of the things that we have to be careful of when we read analogy uh, or hear analogy or even write analogy for that matter is this idea of false analogy. So there's this fellow by the name of William Paley. Uh, and he had an analogy that he wrote where he compares the universe to a watch. And he says it's like a, wa a watch is like a, or the universe is like a watch because a watch has a watchmaker. And so the universe has to have a designer or a maker as well. Sounds really great. But the, re the reason it's false is because he didn't really consider all of the parts, all of the workings and all of the purposes of a watch. So yeah, the universe is like a watch, but guess what? I can use a watch to cover up a tattoo that's on my wrist. Uh, but the thing is, I can't do that with the universe. So creating an analogy or reading analogies, you want to try to catch those false things or you want to be able to account for all of the parts. So again, if we're comparing that US government to a birthday cake, we want to make sure that everything kind of carries over smoothly because what happens when you burn the cake? How do you account for that in the, uh, the birthday cake? How do you account for ice cream cake? Oh my goodness, it's a mess. So thinking about all of those things, uh, it seems like a lot of busy work, but if you're trying to create a good analogy, you do want to account for all of those parts. So to kind of recap some things here, analogies are extended comparisons. That's bottom line. Uh, and they have to connect on many different levels, especially those long ones. Uh, when we do those word analogies, those things, can be, those things will be pretty short. And that's actually what we're going to look at when we look at things on our check and on our quiz, is we're going to look at those statements um, and try to connect those little smaller parts to uh, parts of a whole or cause and effect. Um, 
things like that. So as you think about this, uh, as promised, Mark Twain gives us this analogy. Evolution is a blind giant who rolls a snowball down a hill. The ball is made of flakes. Those are circumstances. They contribute to the mass without knowing it. They adhere without intention and without foreseeing what is to result. When they see the result, they marvel at the monster ball and wonder how the contriving of it came to be, originally thought out and planned. Whereas there was no such planning, there was only a law. The ball once started, all the circumstances that happened to lie in its path would help build it in spite of themselves. So there's circumstances in evolution that we can't control. We can only stand back and kind of marvel at how incredible it all is. That is a good analogy.